Let's talk about how to transfer individual or multiple Revit 3D elements from one Revit project to another. Hi everyone, Alberti with BIM Lounge. Stay tuned so you don't miss our weekly BIM productivity videos. Now, as you know, transfer project standards, as the term states, is essentially just about project settings. So it won't transfer physical elements or annotation elements. In this video, we'll go through the 3D elements, and in the next video, I'll show you how to transfer 2D elements and views. Let's get to work. Now for this exercise, I'm going to assume that you have both files loaded into the same Revit session. For example, here I'm simply using the sample files provided with Revit. Now let's start with individual or a small amount of items. So let's leave the whole project and chunks of projects to the side for now. The first the distinction I'd like to make is between components and system families. Now for individual components, I highly recommend using the edit and load method. So you would just highlight the family, edit, and then you load it to the second project. If you have multiple components in the project, I recommend you use PyRabbit and you would just head over to the families section and save families to a folder. And then from there, you would just switch to the second project and bulk load all the families from there simply using the Revit out of the box function. Now for individual and multiple components, you can also use copy paste from one file to the other. Just keep in mind that by doing that, you're not transferring the whole family, but only that specific type that you are selecting. System families cannot be saved out as RFA families. So in this case, we'll have to use the copy from one file and paste to the other. Now keep in mind that you can also copy system families and components from files that you have linked in into your project into your live model. Now to do that, all you have to do is hover over the element and when it highlights, tap through it until you're able to select it and then copy, paste, and then you'll have that specific type into your project. Let's look at a situation in which you have to transfer multiple items that have a complex relationship between them. For example, whole buildings or chunks of buildings like whole wings. Consider, for example, scenarios like you had two distinct buildings and you realize you want to combine them into the same project for whatever reason. Or you had two parts of the same building that for whatever reason they were modeled in two separate models and now you want to bring them all together. For these two scenarios, I highly recommend using the link and bind method because it gives you more control. Essentially what it does is it brings in this um, element as or project as a whole instead of bringing individual items into your project that can get out of control. Now for this demonstration, I'll use the two sample files and I'll uh, link this um, project into this one. As you can see, I created some space right next to this building. Now, what I'd like to verify first is the levels and the project base point, just to make sure that the two projects are at the right elevation, or at least you have control over it. Now to do that, I'll head over to an elevation here and I'll try to expose. You can use visibility and graphics or this method, but all I want to do is verify that the project base point is indeed at level one, which is at zero, zero relative to the project. And now let's take a look at what happens on this side. So if we go, for example, to that elevation, let's do the same thing. And as you can see, it's called first floor. Now my recommendation is that if you really need to link one project into the other is that the two levels are matching or corresponding levels match their name or otherwise you'll find yourself with uh, levels that are not matching. It's not critical, but I recommend that. Now, as far as the elevation, I think it makes sense to have at least the uh, first floor or level one at the same elevation, so zero, zero. So again, that's not critical, but I think it helps keeping everything tidy. Now, let's take a look at where these walls go. For example, you can't really tell because this is a gable, but these walls are going as far as a constraint from first floor zero to attic zero, right? So that unconnected height is three meters. So let's keep that in mind. I'd like to show you the difference between bringing it in with levels and without levels. Now let's go ahead and link the project in. 
So link Revit. Now the actual location doesn't matter for this exercise, but I want to make sure that I'm grabbing the right insertion point. So I'll select manual base point, which I know is on the site. Now let's go ahead and open it. I can place it there, for example. And then if I go to the west elevation, I can verify that the first floor at, is at zero, 00 and it corresponds to my level 1, zero, 00. And the attic, it's hard to tell, but it's obviously at three zero zero three meters. Let me show you what happens when you bind it. Now, I'm going to stop you here. If you're not sure that this is the right course of action, talk to your team and make sure that this is really what you want to do because once you bind the project, yes, you can go back, but it's always good to just leave a model linked in and just handle the link instead of having all these um, loose items in your project because after you bound it, then uh, all these items will be individual and will um, be harder it will be harder for you to relocate the project easily on the site. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and bind the project. So you can select it, bind link, and let's look at the difference. We're going to try with levels and without levels. Now, with levels, what this is going to do is bring in all these extra levels. And this may not be what you want because all these levels are named differently. If these two projects have different levels, then I would recommend you keep them. But essentially, let's click OK. See what happens. You keep both sets of levels in the same project. So just keep that in mind. Now, what happens if you choose not to keep the levels? So let's go ahead and try it so I can show you. Select the link and then bind link. And I'm leaving the levels deselected. Okay. And now, as you can see, the levels are gone, but let's figure out what happened to the relationships between items, for example, walls. So this wall is going to from level one, which is expected to level two and it retain the actual height. And you'll be able to see on all the other walls. They're the same. They have the same constraints, right? So what it did was it found the next level at the right height. What's going to do is keeping the geometry consistent to the original project. So the project itself won't change, but now it's um, adhering to these new levels. So if you have the same levels, I think that's an easy and almost smooth process. And that's going to make it a lot easier for you to transfer one project into the other. Now let's look at what happens when you have levels that have different heights. Let's try that. For that, I'm going to have to undo and relink the model. Now what I'll do here is change this height, for example, 3.5. And then I'm going to save. Now the model is, the new model is ready to be linked again with the new height. Base point is fine. I'll put it in roughly the same spot. Now, as you can see, the height is updated here. Now let's go ahead and um, bind the model. Now when you select it, you click bind. Now, if I click levels, of course, I'll get all these levels and um, of course the geometry won't change these walls will be attached to these levels that i'm keeping of course but what's more interesting is to see what happens if i leave the levels unchecked now let's click ok now as you can see now the top constraint is again a level two but because revit will tend to keep the geometry consistent what it's going to do is add a top offset so the height is still 3.5 but it's now tied to this level 2 which was the next level up so that's just another thing to keep in mind when you do these kinds of transfers 
Now the next step is to verify what we really want to do with these elements. So again, this is another stopping point. I like to make sure that this is exactly what you intend to do. For now, the interesting thing is that the project is now a model group. So this is a regular Revit group that you can um, edit, you know, make your edits within the group and then finish the group. And it's also still a good way for you to keep the all those elements grouped together and move them easily as a whole. I wouldn't necessarily move them if you don't have to, but that's an option. Now, I would probably still keep it as a group for as long as you can until you're sure that these items really need to be ungrouped. But ungrouping is effectively the last of our tasks here because I can just go ahead and ungroup. And then from that moment on, my elements are effectively part of the live project. So it's no longer a link. Now, can we undo this? Is it reversible? Well, it is reversible if you don't uh, do anything else after ungrouping. So it is reversible from here. Now notice that the items are grouped again because I undid the action. Now another interesting aspect of this is that once you have your model group, you can decide to go back to the link status. So if you cl click link, you have two options. You can either create a new project file or replace it with an existing one. Let's go ahead and uh, replace it with a new file. So we're going to call this the same, but I'm just going to add a character there and let's save it. And now, as you can see, the group is no longer there. And uh, instead of the group, now we have the same entity, the same geometries, but as a link again. Now the file is different, so just keep that in mind. Now, let me know if you have questions relating to this video and specifically how to transfer 3D elements. But in the next video, I'll go over how to transfer items like views, view templates, and sheets. Now, I'll put a link in the description and you'll find it in the end cards soon. Now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.